This is Edith Brown, and I met you approximately two weeks ago. Correct. And I was impressed when I looked across the RV park, and you pulled up in a classy RV, and I noticed it was a toy hauler. And I saw you the next day pulling out a motorcycle, so or a trike. Mm -hmm. So I was impressed right off the bat. So I had to come talk to you. And over the two weeks, we kind of you know spent some time together. And I just wanted to tell you that you're an inspiration to me. And I just wanted to tell a little bit about your story. So what prompted you to buy an RV in the first place? Well, my life changed. Uh, my 43-year-old son died of a massive heart attack, and he and I rode motorcycle together. Mm -hmm. After he was gone, there was no reason for me to have a house any longer because he and I did repairs together. So I decided to sell the house sell everything that was in it, give away what I didn't sell, and uh, keep a few items, and uh, choose a place to live, to start a different type of life. So I moved so to Sioux Falls. So was RVing a part of that decision, or were you just going to change locations? No, RVing has always been a part of the decision, but my son and I were going to do it together eventually. Uh -huh. So the biggest thing was, uh, since I knew that I was going to do it, and I had done a lot of research, I knew that I can't, you know, I can always tow a trailer, but I can't back one up. So that's why I decided to get a toy hauler, something that's contained, that I can still keep my motorcycle with me, yeah. and uh, be able to move from place to place. So I was looking for the um, unattached lifestyle and I think I found both of those not only that Sioux Falls is kind of wild open wide open country <laughs> <laughs> and I like that environment you know like the clouds and everything that are here and um, it's been fun I'm still having growing pains with my RV. So when did you purchase the RV and how long have you March, been? March, March 15, 2018. Were you an avid camper before or oh, was... Oh, yes. Yes? Yes. Oh, I guess. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've always been a camper. Uh, I camped when my kids were small. I was a Girl Scout. And um, I also mixed the groups together when we lived in Atlanta, so I had the boys and the girls camping together. Hmm. Um, my dog, Cloud, and I, we camp a lot at um, Ocean City, and there is a place called Frontier Town. Got everything. It's really nice. And uh, we would be there two and three weeks at a time. You mentioned your son. You also, you had two sons, correct? Mm -hmm. Both died. And both yeah. of them passed yeah, away. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, Patrick was the oldest. Uh, he was 17 years old, and he was going to a birthday celebration for one of the co-workers. And uh, he and his friend were going together, so Preston picked him up. And I found out later that they were only five minutes away from the house before this young lady that had her license for three days. It oh, had been wow. raining for a whole week and it's dark and she comes into the development on the wrong side of the road. So she hits them head on oh, no. and she killed both of them. Oh, no. Yeah. So that was Patrick and uh, that was in 93. And then uh, Keithlin died October 17, 2014. 2014. And then six months after him, Cloud, my white German Shepherd, died April the 10th, oh, no. 20, 2016. No, 2015 is when he died. Yeah. And you, you had said to me, which resonated with me, that you just crying and you just yeah. you had to. Yeah, I just, you know, it gets to the point in life, I don't think you ever get over no. anything as shocking as death. Right. And 
it's even more so when you've invested so much time and energy in raising children and expect to at least know that they can carry on and you've trained them well. And it doesn't work that way. Your kids die and they yeah, leave. I, you. I can't. I don't yeah. have kids, but yeah. I couldn't even. I can even imagine. Yeah, but I mean, you just think about the fact. You go like, if I knew they were gonna die, I wouldn't have spent so much time and work. You know, yeah. doing all of this. But you know, it is what it is. And um, I still do a lot of crying. Yeah. And I think I'll probably be crying until the day I die. Yeah. Uh, it's not often that you find a child that likes the same things you like. Oh, we so y'all were like, just oh, y'all you know, were like best friends. Yeah, yeah, you know, we were best friends and motorcycle traveling dogs is what and my son yeah. always got. You know, and I mean, we could talk for hours, and um, he liked the same old music that I like. Uh, he only started riding motorcycle because I was riding motorcycle. <laughs> you know, he couldn't stand the fact his mother was riding a motorcycle yeah, I was like, and what? he wasn't. Yeah, my mother's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, that's kind of what started all of this craziness. But back to the RV. Uh, when I moved to Sioux Falls, I was actually staying at a hotel called uh, My Place. A really nice hotel that had a complete kitchen and everything. And I was there crying, thinking, mm. I've got to do something with my life. So what am I going to do? I have been looking at the RVs. I have a general idea of what I want. So, okay, after 30 days, let's catch a plane, one-way flight to Texas. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I bought the RV, signed all the documents, and... Uh, <laughs> I guess he took me out for a 45 minute uh, training and took me through town and I was a nervous wreck and yeah. shaking on the highway <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. And uh, finally he says, well, I think you got it, Edith. And I'm like, no, I can't do this. I said, why can't we just put it in tow, call it tow service, and we'll tow it back to Sioux Falls. <laughs> Instead of driving it? Yeah. <laughs> so he says, Edith. Yeah. You came in here on a one-way ticket. You flew in here. So what? You're going to tow the vehicle <laughs> and you're going to fly back. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so I said, well, yeah, that is right, isn't it? But anyway, I just put on my big girl pants. Yep. Because and nobody now was here you it. are in New Mexico. Yep. So um, you, I mean, did you ever think of... Just moving to a different town or moving into a retirement center or, you know, was there any other lifestyle that appealed to you you wanted to travel? Well, you know, I work for USDA. I was a property inspector. So a part of my job, I had already seen what senior citizens do and how they live. <laughs> and you're like, I don't want to <laughs> you know? be there. Yeah, and I would be the only senior citizen riding a motorcycle. Yep. <laughs> you, you know? So, I don't want to do that yet. You know, yeah. I figure the day will probably come and I'll be looking for a little two-bedroom cottage somewhere uh, that I can have a dog and a lake and be but right. right now, it's just yeah. open road. Yeah. So you mentioned that you worked for USDA, mm -hmm. is that correct? Of Agriculture. And then you retired. Mm -hmm. So you worked there in Washington, D.C. Correct. Correct. Which is headquarters. Then you were there during 9-11. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I was at my, my office, sitting at my desk on 9-11 when you felt something shake. But I didn't know what it was. And a girlfriend from from Puyallup, Washington, called and was screaming on the phone, "Edith, run! Edith, run!" And I'm like, "What's wrong?" Yeah. You know? And she said, "Edith, run! Just run!" You know. And then I found out later that the plane hit the Pentagon, and um, it was a mess in DC. And so you you felt the plane hit yeah, the Pentagon. We felt the, it. it shook. So how far thing. were you from the Pentagon? 
Uh, if I was driving, it would take me about 45 minutes wow. to get to the Pentagon. And so you could feel it. You could feel it vibrate. It hit just that hard. And they just, it she just, just told you everything. to run and yeah. she. And she's in Washington. I'm like, yeah. if it's happening in D.C., why is she calling me from Washington knowing about this? And I don't. Yeah. You know? So how long have you been riding motorcycles? I started riding motorcycle January 2002. Yeah. That was and my gift to me. So you bought, because now you have a trike, so you started with a motorcycle. Yeah, I had a Suzuki 1400 2 Wow. Yeah. And the funny thing about that is, <laughs> I wanted to ride motorcycle, so I signed up for the class at Prince George's Community College. And they sent a note telling you what you needed. You needed a full face helmet, you needed gloves, you needed to wear jeans, you needed to wear boots that would cover your ankle, and you needed to wear a lightweight jacket. Well, I went to get my helmet and my gloves, and I could not find a place to park. They had the balloons and everything all <laughs> out, and there were so many people, and they were walking up and down Central Avenue. And so I'm like, okay, all I need is a helmet and some gloves. So I park, you know, up the street, and I walk back with everybody else, get in there, and find out they're having a sail bash. So <laughs> I'm looking at motorcycles now. I don't even know how to ride a motorcycle. Yeah. But I'm looking at motorcycles like everybody else. So anyway, um, <laughs> I was sitting on a motorcycle. I didn't even know how to buy one because the one that I was sitting on was too small for me. So the salesman walk over and he says, hi, he says, come on, I've got one for you. That one that you're on is too small. You got long legs. I say, yep, I do have long legs. So we go to another section and the motorcycle is red and black. And it's kind of yeah. like a wineish yep. red color. It was just a beautiful bike. So I tell him, I says, well, what's the price? So he says, well, this is a one, a one a person motorcycle. The guy died of a heart attack. Uh, the wife decided that she would sell it. It only had a uh, thousand seven hundred miles on it. So. I said, okay, good. So what's the price? So he said, twelve thousand we'll sell it for twelve thousand. And I'm like, no. Oh. <laughs> I said, if you sell it for for ten or seven, he said, Well, let's make it ten. I said, No. Yeah. <laughs> so he said, Well, what are you willing to pay? I said, Let's make it seven. It's gonna be a birthday and a retirement gift for me. I said, I won't retire until 2004, but I know this is what I want to do. So, anyway, he says, okay, let me go talk to my boss. So he goes talk to his boss. He comes back. And so he says, okay, it's a deal. So I said, well, how do you want your money? And so he said, um, well, you can do a credit, chart, credit card or something. I said, nah, take me to the bank. <laughs> I'll get the money out. I said, because I want to be done with you yeah, guys. I'm so done. I paid cash. <laughs> oh, right? wow. It's like, and, I bought a motorcycle. I bought a motorcycle, finally got around to getting the helmet and the gloves. So you and, bought one without ever riding, and yeah. you bought a classy motorhome without ever... <laughs> you right. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Seemed to be a habit, yeah, right? <laughs> it's great. It's, that's awesome. I went to class. And uh, when they were asking uh, how many people had motorcycles, naturally I raised my hand. And so then he said, um, so how long have, you know, everybody been riding? So people were saying a year, two yeah. years, whatever. So he points at me and I said, I've never <laughs> ridden a motorcycle. <laughs> he said, but you say you have one. I said, yeah, I just bought it a few days ago. <laughs> I said, because I know I want to ride. So he said, now that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's a rider. That's, yeah. <laughs> you know? that's, so that's how I got started with the motorcycle thing. That's, that's yeah. cool. As a woman, do you feel safe 
living in an RV and traveling on the road all the time? <laughs> Mostly, yes. <laughs> Mostly, yes. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I've seen a lot of horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's got its Jaws, or it's a cave movie, or it's a... <laughs> yeah. The, you know, I've seen a lot of these movies, and you know movies are made yeah. from something that had happened. Yeah. And we only know that. I'm going to put this out there right now, because you're also a published author. Yeah. I so, am. you um, write books based mm -hmm. on what you know. Yeah, based on what I know. And that's the important thing. If I, you know, whenever I write, I want it to be entertaining. But I also have a habit of teaching something. You know, like... Well, that's good. Like I wrote a book and... Um, it was coming up to Thanksgiving, so I decided I would tell everybody how to make sticky buns, you know, in the well, book. Well, I want to read that. I want to <laughs> read that book. <laughs> you know, so I always try to give a lesson or, or something so that people can remember. In the description below, you can find the link to Edith's website, blog, her blog. website, mm -hmm. and you can find all her books and everything on Amazon, Smashwords. Mm -hmm. And Barnes and Barnes Noble. And Back to the question of, do you feel feel safe on the road? Is, is Basically, there... I do. Um, there are times that you are not really sure because of the environment. You get um, so you just have a gut feeling to yeah, stay or leave. I do because you get you feel people watching you, and uh, that's the first thing, and then. Uh, you kind of see them pacing, or either they ask you, how many miles of your RV you get? I'm a female. Yeah. I don't heck You're like, I, I don't know, and I don't yeah, care. I, I put gas yeah, in it, and I go. Yeah, I just put gas in right. it, yeah. <laughs> so, that has been a thing, but I don't linger around places too long that I don't feel comfortable. That's good. So we talked about you being a published author. Do you mostly write fiction, nonfiction, or both? I write both. Both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when did you start writing? Oh my gosh. I or have been writing <laughs> for a long time. You know, it um Is it is it improper to ask your age? I uh, know, it's good. It's good. I'm sixty nine. Sixty nine. Where did you grow up and did that influence your writing? I grew up in Brunswick, Georgia which is between Savannah, Georgia, Jacksonville, and the Seven Islands, Jekyll Island, St. Simons Island, and Fort Federica. And, um, you know, we spent a lot of time at the beach, you know, as kids. And uh, we also did a lot of scouting activities. And we were pretty active in everything there was, lifeguards and all this stuff. But the crazy thing about it was, um, None of that really steered me toward anything that I really wanted to do in life. It was something interesting that you did when you were a kid, you know, it's like you did roller skating, you did yeah. bicycle, and you did all this stuff. But as far as thinking about what you wanted to do when you got older, my mother wanted me to be a registered nurse. Uh. And I refused. So I knew I didn't want to do that. That one was done. Yeah. So uh, she had, my mom had a kindergarten. And I used to write regulations and instructions for them, permission slips and things like that, uh, so that the kids' parents could sign so they could go on these various trips. That was one thing. The other thing was um, doing resumes and applications for friends. And also, I played the organ and the piano, mm. and I would write lyrics to songs, and that was just something that I played with. But I don't know. I guess it never really dawned on me that I would be a writer. Writing came about because of a deer from my son. You know, uh, I would always have visions and dreams. And when I would wake up, I would tell them something that I dreamed about. 
and they would be sitting here sometimes like they're not breathing, eyes are really big. <laughs> and I'm like, what? what? You know? <laughs> and they like, Drunk. oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, she had another one. You know, I mean, that's the yeah. way they would do it. But he um, told me, he says, Mom, he says, you write for USDA. You have written a lot of stuff for other people. You do self-help books. You have been a ghost writer. Why is it you don't write stuff for yourself? And I said, well, I don't have time. I'm always doing all this other yeah. stuff. You're writing for other people. Yeah. And so he said, I think it would be good if you wrote some books. He says, and you know what? You have crazy dreams. He said, I dare you to write a book about it. And on that dare, I started writing. And the first book I wrote was Consequences. And, and that is published, so you can get that. Yeah, that's, that's from, an interesting book. From Edith's website. Yeah, so that was my first book. And then I usually try to write about life. And the biggest thing came to me, I guess, maybe 10 or 12 years ago. Because it seems like all of us are having shattering or breaking apart of families and you know families aren't as close as they used to be yeah and you get to the point that you have to accept the fact that just because you have the same blood as another person it does not make you family it makes you relate it family takes a lot of work. Yeah. And if you don't put in the, the energy and the time, it breaks apart. So, I found that people that come into your life, you never know why they're there, but they are with you and in your life because they want to be. You're not paying them to be there. They are not related to you. But yet and still, some of them function like you are siblings. And that's where you find your friends. Yeah. And to me, that's where you find a part of a family that you ordinarily wouldn't have. Yeah. That's the way I feel in two weeks that we've been, you know, we spent a little bit of time in two weeks, and it was like we just hit it off. And yeah. I was just like, like I said, impressed. Yeah. And it was like, I want to get to know this lady. And so that's why I'm Well, I was impressed with you guys, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, I mean, you're the one yeah. that yes. has just shattered everything that I ever thought that women are supposed to know or not know. <laughs> I mean, you're just awesome. Thank you. I mean, the no. stuff that you do. <laughs> this, this is your interview. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you, too. Yeah. You know, mm. I was just so amazed by both of you and how friendly you are and how conscientious you are about the things that you do. I swear, I've spent a lot of time at campgrounds. I've never seen a guy on a, a on a lawnmower. <laughs> you know, that's part I, of my job here. Yeah, but I'm, to mow the yard. I've never seen them pull <laughs> trash either. The trash can is running over. You know. Yeah. So you guys have really amazed me. And uh, whether you like it or not, we are RV and sisters. Yes, we are. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I know. It's like, yes, we are. <laughs> what would you tell a new inspiring author? Mm. Write what you know. It's being an author, it's a lonely lifestyle. You're pretty much by yourself a lot, uh, you're doing a lot of research. Because you have to remember, whatever setting you put that story in, whatever year, you have to be authentic. The telephones have to be in existence, the cell phones yeah. have to be in existence, whatever. You have to remember the whole setting. When you write about something that you know about, 
you are more passionate about it. You want to express how you feel about it. And you want to share that. So that's what I would tell a new author. All the to write time. what you to know. write what you know. Don't you know. And in all of us, I think there is um, an author in all of us. Because all it comes from is life experiences. Right. And dreams of folks you know. I used to tell my friends, I said, you're going to be in my next book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Because they do something or say something crazy, or even if they say something that you don't like, you say, you know what? I'm going to write about you. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's all good. Is there any advice that you would give women that would want to travel full time in an RV? Yeah. I would say. Looks like it's about to storm, so we may have to hurry up this interview. I've got quite a few women talking to me about it that, that know me and knew that I sold everything yeah. and walked away. They're looking at a lot of different things because they want the freedom and to be able to do a lot of different things rather than being tied to a stick in a brick house. The only thing that I would say to females is if you think you want to do Aravinia, do it. Life is short. And you don't know if you like something until you do it. You know, so you may end up renting an RV yeah. to try it out, which they are very expensive to rent, but... But then you'd know if you, you even would want know to if ride. you want to do it. That's, that's um, good advice. You know, um, to me, if you really think you want to do nature, try primitive camping. You know, there's usually a lot of people around. They're great places to, to visit and to see. Yeah. And I feel like it's, uh, you know how you stick that toe in the water yeah. for the first time? Just you kind of wave through just a little bit. Yeah, kind of give you a Do you have a bucket list of things you want to do? And if you do, what are they? Or give me just two or... I had to change my bucket list. My bucket list was to get this RV. Yeah. And to visit every state and, and uh, national park throughout the whole U.S. I spent my first 14 days at Cedar Hill State Park. <laughs> Cost me $440. <laughs> I decided, no. <laughs> no. I probably won't do yeah. state parks. But so in, right now you're on a BLM land. Yeah. And I love BLM properties, which is what Bureau of Land Management. And what I like about it is it's a lot like primitive camping. But the best part is you stay for 14 days for free. Yep. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it's like you won the lottery. Yep. Yeah. I know. So, and you meet the, the best people. So, I really mm -hmm. like that. Well, Edith, I just have loved this interview and spending time with you and getting to spend two weeks with you, which wasn't very long, and we're going to see each other on the road again. Is that correct? That's correct. Give me a hug. <laughs> you don't have to get up. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I know. You don't have to get up. Okay. <laughs>